Hello, everybody. This is episode number 49 of the First and Friend Race podcast. Before the podcast gets started, I want to thank you guys for rocking with us in 2018. And to show our appreciation, we're going to do a live stream for episode 50. Uh, we will give you guys a later date when that comes uh, available for you guys to come through. And it's going to be a giveaway and a Q&A session where you can ask us anything. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to do some giveaways as well. On behalf of myself, Bills, and DJ, we really want to say thank you. We have a lot of big things in order for 2019, and I hope you guys stick around and rock with us. If you want to check us out outside of uh, just YouTube, you can catch us on SoundCloud and iTunes. Uh, basically, just Google us on or search for us on those platforms, and we'll be there, and you can follow us and subscribe also, if you don't feel like doing that, you can just check the links uh, on my Twitter, which is VF Baller. Um, the SoundCloud and the iTunes link will be there. So you guys just continue to rock with us, and I hope we, I hope you guys will be there for the live stream and just you know we just talk sports and sports gaming. Uh, once again, I hope you enjoyed this episode of forty episode forty nine, and we'll see you for episode fifty. Thank you videos i know right it, it just <laughs> don't stop man it, it, ain't, it ain't gonna stop, stop man. we're not it, breaking that nigga up on yeah, this fucking podcast it, it ain't gonna stop man all right let, let, let's go ahead and get started uh-huh. episode number 49 uh, first in frame rates myself vf baller got bills in the building we got dj in the building and we have our guest that we keep hounding to get back on the podcast, he's finally here. Oh, B Fife, he What's made it back. He wants to be all inside social on Twitter, you know. But <laughs> no, man, I've been in the green room since the last episode, man. That was what, three <laughs> just, months ago. We just been holding you up, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, everyone come in the green room. You know how they, like a doctor's office when the nurse come out and call your name. My yes. name didn't get called. Man. <laughs> Hey, so look, I had to finally, I had to finally run out there. And why Key is like, fuck that green room. Yeah, man, yeah, he's yeah. doing his live but show. You know, but, but you know what? At least your name got mentioned. Oh. There was one week that they, nobody talked to, you know, even brought me up or anything at all. So, hey, you, you know, know that, I'm, you know, you know I'm that. one of the people on the show, so. <laughs> We we still talking about old stuff, man. You yeah. know. Yeah, I, I was gonna make a suggestion not to mention him again, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this yeah. episode forty nine, man. Twenty eight in three. Hey, hey, that hey, that's never gonna change. You're not gonna beat me up on that. Matter of fact, I'm damn near turn my back on that damn team. There's another team in South Georgia I root for now. But anyway, um, let's see. 2018 in review this is what we're going to talk about we also have some other issues that's been going on within the nfl talk about our teams and the coaching changes or lack thereof also we'll talk about the pittsburgh steelers what's been going on with antonio brown and uh you know the first part of this podcast did a little bit of ad living but we're gonna give a little bit of structure that we we normally do it's not gonna be much but anyway what right, what part of two right. what part of twenty eighteen y'all want to start on or do y'all want to talk about our teams first? Uh, y'all I think p- we get the negative out of the way. So the teams are definitely the best. Yeah. Because I think there's all negative between the Patriots and the Redskins, honestly. Mm. Uh, I mean, you had a. I mean, honestly, for the up and up, the Forty Nine ers still have something to look forward to because uh, Garoppolo's coming back. Even Nick Mullins played very well, and they got a pretty nice tight end over there. B5, what are your Pause. thoughts about your teams this year? You know, I mean, they they had opportunities. They, they were really close, and even their losses. I mean, there was maybe one, two games that they got blown out. But, I mean, for the most part, with the roster pretty much being, you know, injured and stuff like that, uh, you know, I mean, the record doesn't look it, but, you know, they were decent games, you know, and, you know, no, some notable wins. You know, like the last one against the uh, Seattle uh, Seahawks. I mean, that's a good win, you know, um, just to kind of go into the off season and, and uh, you know, with some kind of momentum. But like yeah. you said, you know, getting back some of the players and stuff like that. Yeah, you got two, and of, I don't you, think, you got two huh? of my, you got two of my uh, players over there that, uh, that I'm really rooting for, McKinnon and Breda, both of them went to my college. Hey, Breda, nice. Yeah, I know, man, it Georgia, Georgia nice. Southern bred, man. There's more of that to come from out that school, too. You better watch him. 
Well, I got a question for you, Fife. What's up? Do you truly believe that Jimmy Garoppolo is the quarterback of the future for that team? Wow. Um, like, after seeing Mullins, seeing Garoppolo for the first part of the year, like, what's your assessment? Um, I, I want to say that he is, um, but we still didn't really see enough of him. I mean, we saw more of Mullins than we did of, of Garoppolo, but uh, but you know, a lot of I, I think I might speak for most people, but to say that a lot of a lot of the Garoppolo hype is basically off the last what five games where he just went with five and zero. Oh, right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So um, I, I I would like to say Garoppolo, but um, but I, I don't know. I don't know, but I, I'm 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 on board with him until he proves otherwise. Yeah, that's a, um, that's a tough one too because you paid him all that money. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, exactly. And and with Mullins, and I was talking to my boy about that, you know, and he his his take on it, and I thought it was pretty good. He said that you know there's there's some people that are just talented, you know, don't have to work at it, but Mullins is kind of one of those like blue collar uh, quarterbacks where you know he's probably got a really good work ethic, you know. He does everything, and he just tries to get better, you know. Uh, may not exactly have all the talent, you know, at his fingertips, you know, God's gifts, but, but you know, he can get better over time. Whereas Garoppolo seems like he possesses a little more, you know, more talent that he doesn't have to necessarily work on. So um, seems like a quicker road with Garoppolo, in, in, in my opinion, I guess. That's the way I look at it. From that See, my argument with Garoppolo, just my view – Watch him on the Patriots. I couldn't really assess him so much because we have um, we have so many different uh, to, so many different keys that make every player successful that plays here pretty much, and um, a lot of it has to do with the defensive coordinators, uh, offensive coordinators, um, players that are around. Just Edelman was a big help to Garoppolo, and. Uh, Gronk was a big help to Garoppolo as well. But when I look at Garoppolo and I look at how people assessed him playing against teams like the Jaguars late in the season, it seemed like the level of competition that he played against wasn't exactly the level of competition that he played at um, against at the beginning of this year. Because it was towards the end of the season, and a couple of the teams that he faced, it really seemed like they kind of felt like they had nothing to really play for as opposed to when he played this year starting out fresh, he wasn't the same dominant quarterback because we've only seen him in spurts. And even when I saw him in spurts here in New England, everybody was trying to convince me, oh, you know, Garoppolo's going to be the next coming. I'm like, I don't don't see it. So I think I need a full year of Jimmy Garoppolo. But at the same time, looking at how Mullins played, Geez, if y'all didn't pay him, if y'all didn't pay Garoppolo so much money, I would think about putting him in a quarterback competition, honestly. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, what giving him a chance to earn a backup position? Yeah, I mean, I think I would start. I think I would start preseason. Obviously, with Garoppolo is the one, but I mean, I don't think it would be. I don't think it would be set in stone. It wouldn't be like a Tyrod Taylor Baker Mayfield situation yeah. where <laughs> there's like no possibility that Baker Mayfield's gonna start. In my eyes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I got you. I think if Mullins goes out and takes that job in preseason, once again, the money obviously makes it a bit different. You're paying him so much. It's kind of hard to picture him playing, what, what do you play this year? Four games, five games? Yeah, something like, like that. Was like, you played about good. four or five games this year, and you're paying him all that money. You're going to have him come back and be in a quarterback competition and potentially sit on the bench if Mullins outplays him is – it's just a tough situation, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, my, my thing is at the end of the day, I think I think the team still has a good nucleus to go up. A fairly young team. Uh, you know, the quarterback situation is always going to be an issue, especially if the backup's playing pretty good. But I, I think at the end of the day, I think they're going to be all right. Seems um, like a good issue to have, honestly. In that case, yeah. Not at all, but in that one, yes. Yeah. Um, what about the Redskins, uh, DJ? You want to talk about your Redskins? <laughs> oh God, yeah. We we'll buckle so, in. So basically, another season, no playoffs. Uh, we're in shambles once again, and I think this—I don't really see any change in sight. 
I'm like, we started out six and three and then just went into free fall mode. Now, number one, the big excuse is going to be injuries. We did suffer injuries to two of our offensive guards in uh, Laval, and we lost Scherf um, in the middle of that season. But we also had injuries to uh, Crowder, Thompson, and uh, let's see. And then eventually it hit our quarterback, Alex Smith, with season possibly career-ending injury. And then the same injury happened to our backup. So we went to signing Mark Sanchez, and that was a, uh, an issue altogether. Then we signed Josh Johnson. That led to another issue altogether, and we finished season 7-9. and nine. So with that being said, the, one, the lone bright spot at the beginning of the season was our defense because our offense sucked at the beginning. Well, they were okay, and then it, it digressed to, like – just nothing. Like, our defense was constantly on the field. And then the offense started to pick up a little bit, but then Alex Smith goes down, Colt McCoy goes down, Mark Sanchez has a one-game experiment before he gets benched, which we all, everyone saw that one coming. And Josh Johnson just giving a free pass. So the one lone spot of the whole entire year was Adrian Peterson. After we lost uh, Geis, Darius Geis at the very beginning was our rookie running back selection from uh, LSU. Uh, go down against the Patriots game in the in the Patriots game preseason goes down for ACL injury out for the year. Doug Williams just brings him, sneaks him in the camp, and oh that God. was like our <laughs> only big pickup was had to be snuck in. And this man rushed for a thousand plus yards, like a thousand. 1,047 yards. Uh, VF, was you about to say fuck Der uh, Doug Williams? Or no, Williams? It's, it's a clown on Twitter that I see. I just just oh. keep going. I, I, wow. <laughs> Should have done the show live. <laughs> no, man, I ain't ready to go live, man. I ain't, I ain't, man people can get we, pissed the fuck off, man. This, yeah, never mind. Just, what, keep going, DJ. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. So, Adrian Peterson at 33 years old, for 1,000 yards in which... There are several people in NFL history that have done that at that age. John Riggins doing it at 33 and 34. And was one of those years on the quite... Jets? What was that? I oh, think wait, so. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, one of those years he was on the Jets when he did it. The, 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 the his final year on the Redskins, and then his final, I guess, season as a Jet. Mm -hmm. But um. The whole problem we had on offense was the fact that we had no receivers. Yeah, there were receivers out there, but we really didn't have a resemblance of what a receiver, plus the injury to Paul Richardson Jr., who's to me is a third is the third wideout at best. They wanted to use him as a deep threat. And um 50 50 and um Josh Dotson. I always I, I I harped on this man all year because you know being a wide receiver myself, I know the effort it takes to you know get open, to understand defenses and stuff like that. And this man just doesn't get it. He just doesn't get it. He half-asses everything. He half-assed everything this past season. Even even his catches show little effort. In trying to break away from tackles, show little effort in catching passes. So show basically, you're saying y'all needing a receiver. No, see, here's the thing: it's not the fact that we need a new receiver. We need new receivers, plural. You know, it's crazy. Ryan Grant uh, escaped from Washington, and his team made the playoffs. That's what I'm saying. It's like, and now going into this off season, just to look at it, it looks like we're about to replace Crowder. Because, you know, I, I saw this in a tweet early in the season because we have Trey Quinn, Mr. Irrelevant. All of a sudden, everybody's looking at him as Crowder's replacement. And now uh, sportscasters, local sportscasters, are starting to say that too. And I'm just like, now why would you go and do something stupid like that? But then also look at the fact that they did let go of Deshaun Jackson uh, a couple of seasons ago. And Pierre Garçon, who's on your 49ers beef fight. Yeah. After they. You're trying they, to sound too about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, I, yeah, I, he I is. Like, yeah. No, because I like Pierre Garçon. 
Art Monk is my favorite wide receiver of all time. Talks about faith. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's on your 49ers. No, because yeah, of that, yeah. he's on the 49ers. <laughs> I, I wanted him in DC. I wanted the Redskins to at least keep I, I one of the 2,000 yard receivers. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm saying. He is like I just feel like I feel like there's room for other people, man. Go ahead and have him, man. He was cool back on the Colts, but uh Yeah, that uh, I, yeah, once, once he left probably. once he left the Colts, I, I just found him irrelevant, honestly. You know what? Washington say he was he was he's pretty good, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah. Like he broke. He had a hundred. At one point, he had. Let's see. Art Monk's record was, uh, I think, a hundred and eight receptions. Uh, uh, Pierre Garcon, with Griffin at quarterback, broke his record. Yeah. So well, what happened with that whole Griffin situation? <laughs> well, signing Josh Johnson and no, 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 no. See, here's the funny thing. Uh, one thing I thought about with with Gruden because I they're not gonna fire him. Bruce Allen's probably gonna stay at the same spot, and that that leads to a whole another can of worms. That is, I'm like that led to that last game of the season with the Philadelphia Eagles basically taking over FedEx Field. So it's like I I think I'm gonna be like that one. Uh, poster that said I'm just going to be indifferent to the team now. Like, I'm not going to feel anything. Win, lo- win, lose, as long as Daniel Snyder and and Bruce Allen and Jay Gruden are a part of that organization, I would just, I won't feel anything. It's just, I'm, I'm done with it. 20 years of this. It's just <laughs> That, that's all I gotta say. I actually did a video. And it's up on YouTube if y'all want to check it out on my channel. I talk about it, so I don't want to take any more time. What, a, what about so your, what about your it. team, Bills? Wait, 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 wait. Can I ask one quick question? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah go ahead. Hey, go ahead. Hey, hey, so what's up with that Ruben Foster, man? What, how how you gonna condone that, man? Jesus <laughs> Does it look <laughs> like I condone that? I'm about to say, I know. How I... <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but why, why would they? Why would they immediately like? Like they didn't give him like no chance to just chill. Like they, it's like they, they, it's like they picked him up like three three minutes later. They picked up the phone. Yeah, yeah. because because they 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 operate their business like Trump runs the country. Oh boy, oh. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going there. There's a reason we stay away from politics yeah, on the hey, show. Let me let me tell you something, man. <laughs> After the two years this man has been in office, I've done my duty to do what I got to do to take care of myself, and don't worry about that, man. I'm not doing it. I can't. People like, got. People I, gotta, I 100% agree with you, bro. But yeah, I said, yeah, I said I don't disagree. I'm not saying I don't. I, I'm, I'm like agree, at the end of the like, day, I can't do anything about what the ownership does. So it's just like they do what they do. But you know, right. it's gonna continue to go downhill until this man changes. And he, in 20 years, the man has not changed his uh, process. So you know, I can just be indifferent. Right. And that's it. I feel you on that. Yeah. What about you, Bills? How about your Patriots? <laughs> I, I I hate this team. Damn. I I, I they won like five Super Bowls. You hate this it's team. Not, not, well, it was Damn. A, I wish I could get two more Super Bowls out of mine. Damn. No, I don't hate the organization. I hate this team that we currently have. I I I don't like it. And one of the main reasons I don't like it is because Bill Belichick is the one that coaches it. I'm sorry. I don't care what anybody says. This man has tried to ruin this team for the past three years. First off, not starting Malcolm Butler. And I know this has nothing to do with this season, but I have to give the whole timeline for a lot of people who probably don't pay attention to the Patriots other than hating them. Um, Malcolm Butler did not start the Super Bowl after playing 97% of the snaps for the entire year. Then you try to trade Gronk in the offseason. Then to make some sort of power play or show that you're still the boss of this team, uh, at some point last season, you pretty much banned Tom Brady's trainer from being around the team and being on team planes and things like that. This dude is on such a power trip right now. It's really annoying. We get it. You didn't want to trade Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay? But for you to make decisions on this team that directly affect the outcome of the season pretty much for the past three years is just crazy to me. Then on top of that, everybody keeps calling him defensive genius. How many top 10 defenses has he produced 
with his drafting. His drafting. It's left totally to him. He can't blame anybody. We haven't lost any coordinators other than Patricia. So, over the past... The last top 10 defense we had in scoring and yardage was 2014 when, guess who? Darrell Revis was there. Okay? So, this defensive genius needs to figure it out. Because we're going to have to play a road game at some point in this playoff. Uh, in, in, in this playoffs. Because I don't think Kansas City is going to lose in in that first game that they play. So, if we get past the Texans or whoever it is we play in the first round, which is going to be a hard game within itself, I don't really see any destination to the, to, the, to the Super Bowl for us this year. And the big reason is because you faced Gronk out of the offense. Yes, Josh Gordon has his issues. We get it. He's not there anymore. That's fine. But for you to phase Gronk out of the offense when he's fully healthy, why would you do that? And these fucking scrubs that we have at cornerback, I mean, good God. It's hey, like... I got a question. Is anybody happy with their team? <sighs> it's like everybody's pissed off about something. Well, look, hey, if there was a Rams or a Saints or a Colts or a, you know, then yeah. But we, we don't have that situation on this podcast, unfortunately. Man, listen, my team went seven and nine. I have I, I, I'm not saying everything is fine with Atlanta, but I, I don't have like this type of victory off of my team. The, this is the thing. When I sat and watched Bill Belichick get zero blame for our our Super Bowl losses, it it fucking irks me. It's like where did this dude get this this where did he get this fucking handicap? Where it's like, every time we lose, no matter how much dumb shit he does throughout the year, he never gets criticized. Right. That's how walking around the city, and it's annoying. I understand where you're coming from, but... can put up 500 yards in the Super Bowl, it still turns out to be his fault somehow. <laughs> I, I understand like, what you're saying. I, I get what you're saying. It's like, it, it, but, but here's the thing. This is what gets me. It's like, the Patriots fans are like, well, let's wait until week 15 when... We have home field advantage. Well, well, now we don't have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Now we have to go on the road where we've pretty much struggled. We've never won a game in Denver, which we don't have to play them this year, thank God, because even with their sorry-ass squad this year, they'd probably still find a way to beat us if it was yeah. played in Denver. Um, we're not very good on the road in the playoffs. It's not even a secret. Tom Brady hasn't played many. I think he's only played eight playoff games in his career on the road. I don't like where this franchise is going. Tom Brady, I hope he doesn't make the Super Bowl. I hope we don't make the Super Bowl. Well, I mean, when you look at, <laughs> I mean, when you look at, when you look at the Patriots, all things must come to an end. I mean, everybody's getting, you know, your your core players are getting older. You know, uh, people are, you know, it, I mean, that's just how it is. I mean, so you're gonna have you gonna have to reload sometime. I mean, every dynasty reloads. I mean, the 49ers of the 80s they reloaded. They won one since, but they haven't been the same. The Cowboys, same thing. So this is my question, VF. If if we know that the Tom Brady era is coming to an end, why would you not draft Lamar Jackson? Yeah, I mean, you had a quarterback, but, you know, your, your owner said no, and he went to San Francisco. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm sure that Kraft wasn't sold, and maybe Josh McDaniels wasn't sold either on Garoppolo being the quarterback of the future. Look at what Lamar Jackson is doing right now. Yeah, it's easy to say that now. I mean, but two years ago when Jimmy Garoppolo was there, I mean, nobody would think about Lamar. Unfortunately, they should have been. Yeah, nobody was. I mean, come well, on. The dude, okay, the, dude, okay. the, dude was a so, the dude was a sophomore, and people really were no, thinking no. about can he throw the ball. I'm saying I mean, is, I mean, let's be honest. Two years ago. This, this... Last offseason when our backup was Brian Hoyer. Mm. Okay. Mm. We didn't draft Lamar Jackson. No, you That's didn't. My... Yeah, you didn't know you didn't. Yeah, but that it is kind of crazy. Yeah, at some point, you got to think about the future. Brian... I mean, uh, but listen, you, Brian you, you, I mean, I, I, I get it, but <laughs> you already took a swing at that, and you didn't. It's not like you never did. <laughs> <laughs> we, we struck out looking. No, y'all didn't strike out. Y'all, y'all, what y'all did, y'all didn't even give a chance to pitch the ball. Y'all let the dude walk. I mean, y'all uh, yeah, gave it away. Whoa, I don't care about Garoppolo. What I'm saying See, is... Yeah, now, now you don't, but I'm just saying now, I mean, I'm just yeah. saying, yeah, now it sounds good you don't care about him, but at one time, y'all had, just yeah. like, and, and I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that uh, Bill Belichick's a genius or whatever, but he had it in place to where you had a comparable backup once the Brady era was over. 
I mean, y'all dropped the ball. So, be honest, if I was Bill Belichick, I'd be like, well, why bring another one in here? Y'all only let one person go. Y'all made me get rid of him. Why would I do it again? Y'all might do the same thing. You and I'm what? not I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but you got to look at the mindset on that, on, that, on that side of the spectrum, too. Well, then he must look at that as far as defenders, too, because we haven't brought one of those in in years, either. So, this defensive genius... I mean, this this genius in general, this god among football players and coaches, he's surely figured out how to make this team look very pedestrian without one pass rusher, one receiver, and one quarterback. That's all I'm saying. Is you burn down the house, and instead of saying, let me go get some water, you get gasoline, and you don't draft Lamar Jackson. Mm. I, I, I'm not I, – I get what you're saying, but, I mean, I can see if y'all never tried to get a quarterback to succeed Tom Brady, but – I, I mean, when you're, with, with the reports are saying that the owner said, I don't want that quarterback to see Tom Brady. I want Tom Brady. If I if my owner said that, I probably wouldn't draft another one. That That's yeah, just me. Yeah, but what actually happened was, and, and see, that's the thing. A lot of people think that's what happened. What really actually happened was Belichick wanted to start Garoppolo this year. It wasn't about the future. He wanted to start him this year. Okay. So, why would you do that? What 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 smart NFL coach would say? Yeah, let's bench the guy who came back twenty eight to three against the Falcons and threw for five hundred yards against the Eagles. Well, in the Super- I, I, I understand that, but when you look at the flip side of that, look at the stuff he's done throughout his entire coaching career. He always let a player go a year before they're supposed to. He always let a player go the year before they were supposed to get paid. If we're being honest, it was never I about. Mean, uh, it never was about getting paid with Brady, but at the same time, it's like you still had value if you would let Brady go a year before everybody said you should have. Yeah, but Lloyd Malloy was let go five years before he should have. Asante Samuel three years. Richard Seymour two years. I mean, the list goes on and on. So well, that's just just his mo. I mean, that's what he always done. He had it. He, he, he had. He had he had okay. it in place to do the same thing with the quarterback. Now, with they went, it didn't happen, and I'm not sure everything that happens up in the front office. But I can see from my perspective, why would you try to bring another quarterback in when it was nixed the first time? Because here's the thing: Tom Brady is now 41 years old. At the point where he was trying to groom Garoppolo for not even groom Garoppolo, set Garoppolo up to start in front of Tom Brady. Tom Brady was still playing at a very, 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 very high level. What I'm saying to you is, if you know that all these players he's let go throughout all these years, they've come and gone, but the the one constant has been Tom Brady at quarterback, as far as the roster is concerned, then you get rid of Tom Brady, then what do you have? You have Jimmy Garoppolo, who actually you played have, pretty good until he blew his knee out. You have Jimmy Garoppolo, who played well until he blew his knee out, and you have a guy who, when he played against teams who were inspired and actually started the season out with something to play for, he didn't play very well. And who's that? Jimmy Garoppolo. All right. All right. He went five and no. I I mean I get what you're saying, but I mean at the end of the day, it, it just comes down to the fact that as long as Bill Belichick is the head coach of this team, we will continue to have a coach who thinks he can make stars out of fucking scrubs and get Ocean State job lock receivers because Tom Brady will bail us out until Tom Brady's not there anymore. And yeah, that's how it's coming. It's yeah, fast approaching. Yeah, 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 y'all, y'all will be fine. You're the number two seed in the AFC. Y'all, y'all will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not like y'all missed the playoffs or anything. Y'all, Just like the Niners and the Redskins and the Falcons. No, no. <laughs> All three of these other teams are not even in the playoffs, and you're the number two seed, and you're complaining about what's going on. I understand it. Father Time will catch up. <laughs> the two seed every year. That's my point. I'm what's wrong like, with it's... being a two seed? You're in the playoffs. You have a chance to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, on paper, I guess. This team is a problem. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> See, bro, this team is not a Super Bowl team, and I'm not even mad because it's not a Super Bowl team. I'm mad about how we got here. Well, let's be honest. I mean, if you really look at the the last two teams that were the Patriots, they really weren't Super Bowl teams. They just played well to win. We are. I mean, you're, you're not going to look back at the last couple of Super Bowls that the Patriots won and be like, oh, my God, those are the greatest teams ever. It's like, yo, that team did what they had to do to win the game. But I mean, I mean, you're thinking about back when Chandler Jones 
was still here and back when Dante Hightower was still healthy. You think about a completely different Patriots team. This isn't the same Patriots team. No, they're not. But, I mean, we're not going to say the same thing. Like, you're not going to put these Patriots teams up against other great teams that won Super Bowls. Your team just did whatever they had to do to win, and they did a damn good job at the moment. You know, I mean, that's the reason why I say you guys are number two team. You guys have a pretty good coach that knows how to coach well to win games. You're in a pretty good spot compared to the other three guys that are on this panel. <laughs> we, we would love to switch places with you, sir. Bro, <laughs> let me tell you something. If y'all switch places with me, y'all would understand what the fuck I'm talking about. I wish sometimes I can switch places and be an Eagles fan where I never knew what it was like to win, so I can't even really get mad when I see opportunity squad. All right, because... all right, all right. All right. Let, let's, let, 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 let me tell you something. My Chicago Bulls won six titles. I don't give a fuck uh, if they ever win again, honestly. My Braves won one. I can give a fuck if they ever win again. You're telling it, me, as a as a sports fan, you go into season saying you don't give a fuck whether your team. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm used to winning multiple championships in my own personal life, so I I'd rather. But uh, yeah, in my winning. personal life, yes. If I'm if I'm still playing, yes. But I'm <laughs> watching this shit from TV. I can give a I can honestly give a damn if any of those teams who already won win again. Now the Falcons yeah. is a different story. If they win one, I'm good. But the fact that they haven't won one, yeah, I'm gonna still be bitching about that. But these other teams who already won, I'm sitting on the couch watching them. I, I can I can care less if they win another one because I, I, I feel, already already seen them win. That's why we're in two different. That's why we're in two different positions. I mean, at the end of the day, if I never knew what it was like for a Patriots team to win, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really be able to grasp how close we got to winning and, and then losing. Right. Because because, and and DJ came from this. I mean, the Redskins were a powerhouse. Yep. Uh, Fife, the the Forty ers were definitely a powerhouse. 49ers were the team in the 80s, and it's and it was actually between the 49ers and the Redskins, and it was one game the 49ers wound up winning that game that wound up deciding the team in the 80s. I mean, no, I mean, don't get me And 90s, too, and 90s, too. Yeah, in the 90s, yeah. Ah, I wouldn't say okay, 90s. Okay. That was yeah. more the... That was kind of like right, I mean, Cowboys. don't get me wrong. I, I would love to see my team to win multiple championships, but I'm not going to be, like, pissed off if they don't if I've seen them win before. That that's I just me. Off, I get pissed off when I see things that contribute to why we lose early on, and everybody else in the fan base seems to ignore them. Which DJ is able to see that too, where he sees things early on that will say, "Fuck, this ain't gonna work out," and everybody else is sitting there telling him, "No, you're just being a Debbie Downer." No, well, I mean I get that. You just you just you're just dealing with dumbass people. I get that. Which is exactly what I'm, that's that's my point. The whole fucking Patriots fan base is. Yep. Now, idiot. Now, oh, I now, now, I'm one, now, as well. now I'm 100% with you on that because I'm like, okay, if you don't see what I see, obviously you're just thinking about winning and not actually seeing what's on the field. I get that. But at the end of the day, I'm like, it, I would love to see the Bulls win another one. But if they don't, I'm not I'm not going to be up in arms about it because I've seen them win. That I mean, that that's just me. But I mean, see, here's the thing. If you wanted to talk about the Bulls, you wouldn't have to come to us to talk about them. You could talk to some open-minded Bulls fans. DJ can't go and talk to a whole bunch of Redskins about the Redskins, and I can't do it with the Patriots because I lose brain cells and it'll drive me to drink. Now, now, with, drink. Now, now, with that being mm. said, I totally agree with that. Now, I, I, can't, yeah. I can't deal with people who think they know about sports and they think just winning is the end-all, be-all, and you try to tell them the intricate things about winning and losing, right. and they just don't know shit. I, I totally agree with that. I agree I'm with sure. that. I'm sure there's Warriors fans who are real Warriors fans who are going through this right now. Like, yeah. they've been Warriors fans since the Mitch Richmond days. Yeah, run you know, TMC. The, the the Jason Richardson and Baron Montrell Sprewell days. The Montrell Sprewell days. I mean, way back. And then they're trying to tell dudes, you know, what the situation is. And they're, they're seeing things that aren't, you know, very – they're not – Looking like they're gonna fare very well, and everybody's like, "Well, you know, you're just a spoiled fan." It's not. It's not spoiled. It's just we can see things that aren't gonna work out in the long run. But yeah, I can. I can understand that. I do. I mean, it, I don't have much say for my Falcons. They're seven and nine. They got rid of the offense, defense, and special teams coordinator. The coach, uh, Dan Quinn, is actually. I think he's gonna be running the defense now. If he don't get it done this year, at least if he don't at least make it the playoffs this year, I, they, they need to go and get rid of his ass. Who starts yeah, that, here, Devontae Freeman or Tevin Coleman? Um, Devontae Freeman's still going to be on the roster. Tevin Coleman's probably going to be gone. He's a free agent. 
De- Devontae Freeman has just been signed. He signed a five year deal. They're, they're not going to get rid of him. And I think it's, I think Tevin Coleman's the better running back. But that's what happens when you you sign somebody beforehand. I mean, I think Devontae Freeman's good, but he's just. He, I thought Tevin was the injury prone guy. It's like it's totally the opposite. And um, I, I I don't know. Maybe he'll do okay. I mean, we we drafted another running back with Edo Smith. He's pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. Brian Hill is on the roster. Uh, you know, I think they're gonna be okay. I hate to see Tevin go because I, I think Tevin's the better running back out of all of them. Um, I once, we, sh- once we hit one and four, I knew it was over. It, it was nothing. Oh, what you about to say? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, that's what I was going to ask. I was going to ask, when y'all hit one and four, it must have been crazy as a Falcons fan because, um, you know, that that team looked pretty promising coming into this year. No, I mean, it was, I mean, listen, I mean, we went to the Super Bowl the year the year before. We at the the year after that we went only team in the NFC that went to the playoffs. I mean, the team was there. I mean you lose your your strong safety, you lose your free safety, you lose you lose your middle linebacker. All of a sudden you're one and four and nobody on defense is playing ball except for Devontae Casey. He's the only one that's playing. And I mean I, I knew it was over at that point, so it's like nothing to really talk about on my end anyway. So I was just more likely looking forward to the following year. I, I really don't care about what draft pick we got. Um, Dan Quinn has done a pretty good job of drafting players, no matter what uh, what part of the, uh, the draft board he's in. He's always seemed to get a pretty good quality player, so I'm, I'm not worried about that. Uh, but I, I just look at the team. I think for them to be seven and on one and four and go seven and nine. Ooh, excuse me. It was a, a big feat in itself because the defense was terrible. Right. And, and, you know, Matt Ryan played really, pretty good this year. Basically, his numbers was on par with the year that he won the MVP. But the mm. fact that it, the fact that they, they only won seven games, he, he was nowhere near cl- close to getting the MVP nod, not even a look. But uh, I, I don't have anything else to say about him. I, I think he did the right thing to get every, getting rid of everybody. I, I mean, at the end of the day, I think Sark did okay. He ended up getting mm-hmm. the team number six in offense after the first two years, which is terrible. So I think if anybody could have kept him, but um, I'm not mad that he got let him go. So there's oh, there's, there's rumblings now that they may get Gary Kubiak as a uh, as offense coordinator. That'd be great. What is he? Oh, I, I don't really know much about Kubiak. Uh, Kubiak is a pretty good offensive offensive mind guy. So I mean I, I don't have anything else to say. It's like, you know. You brought up MVP. Uh, who's everybody's NFL MVP right now? Who is my MVP? Like if you like, like at end of the season. It's pretty much the end of the regular season. Obviously, who who's y'all's regular season MVP in the NFL? I, I got Mahomes. I, I, I have to say Mahomes. I would say Mahomes too, but they're going to give it to Breeze. Uh, five. Let's make it unanimous. No, no, no. I say I say I say Mahomes too, but they're going to give it to Breeze. Breeze never won Breeze never won an MVP. He's been a prolific talked about quarterback because of his age this year, and they're the number one seed in the NFC. They're going to give it to him, even though his numbers I mean, are not even close to Mahomes. I mean, you think about it. Every I mean the, the way sports in general is going is everyone wants to see offense, and he was the ultimate display of offense this year. So that's the way I see it. I'm talking about Mahomes? Yeah. yeah Mahomes. Oh, I agree. Yeah. But, I mean, at the flip side of that, you're looking at somebody who's probably going to retire at the end of the year. He's been such an ambassador to the NFL yeah. and the New Orleans yeah. Saints. Or, yeah. they're, they're, they're going to give it to him. Do he deserve it? I don't think he does. I mean, his numbers are nice, but his numbers are nowhere near his – other years that he's played, I mean, there's times he threw over 5,400 yards. He didn't even get over 4,000 yards this year. But they're going to give it to him because of this, the, the the ranking of his team right now. He's possibly going to be winning the Super Bowl. And, you know, they just love the old quarterback who's done quote-unquote so much for the game. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're going to give like, it. I, I don't agree with it. But, I mean, I, I promise you, ESPN will catch a – they'll pitch a bitch if he don't get it. It was I think it's so it hard. I think, and it's crazy because it, it's, it's kind of hard sometimes to equate value. As, as you know, it's obviously called most valuable player, but a lot of times that's not what their award is about. But if I was just looking at, um, 
even from a player of the year standpoint, got to be Mahomes. I mean, yeah, I agree. I mean, I mean, I think all the four of us is actually in agreement. So it's like yeah. he he should get the MVP. But I know what, what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, look, Matt Ryan, seven and nine, yeah, has they, way they better numbers. Yeah, he has yeah. way better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a narrative to the story. Matt Ryan has way better numbers than Drew Brees, but they're they're going to give it to him. I, I, I'll bet they're going to give it to him. I, well, I, I wouldn't person, if they weren't so high on these on records, like as far as what your team record is, I mean, Russell Wilson's getting no consideration. And that's another one that could possibly and get Andrew it. Luck is getting no when, consideration. When you really look at value, yeah, it, yeah, Russell Wilson definitely. You know, another Andrew one. Andrew Luck uh, as well. Andrew Luck. Phillip Rivers is another one. I'm about to say, would Andrew Luck get comeback player of the year too? He, he shouldn't. He, he, he should get it. There's, there's nobody should, else should get it. Comeback player of the year. I can't think anybody else. Well, is AP technically coming back? Oh, that's a correct Yeah. Yeah, that's was, a, Because. Yeah, that is a good one too. That's good. He did end this season on injured reserve last year. But you know why he wouldn't get it though? Because the team's not in the playoffs. He, that's why. Because I don't think anybody's ever won that award twice, which is kind of be a crazy situation. Right, you? right, right. Uh, That'd be interesting. But I, I, I probably that's probably the reason why AP won't get it because he's not in the playoffs. Right. But yeah, I think Mahomes is uh, the general consensus. But it seems, I mean, they could always, like Fife said, change the narrative and they will. I mean, yeah. ESPN will push that shit to the point where the NFL will take notice. So they're probably talking to the NFL right now. Please put Breeze in there so we can have something to talk about. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. That's, that's like that's, it, that's actually a bitter uh topic that I have uh because they did that to my Niners, you know what I'm saying? With uh Ray Lewis going out. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I personally I, I I don't know who's in cahoots, but there was some fishy play with that man. Let Ray Lewis go out with a you know storybook ending, but I don't right. think Ray Lewis did that. Yeah, like uh, that. that's what I'm saying. I mean I wouldn't be surprised. I mean I'm not saying that I'm not saying that certain things. Well, I don't, I'm not gonna say like on the field players necessarily rigged, but these narratives that they be trying to push outside of the game is is absolutely rigged. God, it, it, there's no no doubt in my mind. Yeah, when you look at the Peyton Manning one, I think there's no more vivid one than that could than, be another one. That game against the Panthers, oh, I yeah. think the Panthers yeah. were gonna come and destroy these dudes, and they came out looking lethargic, and they came out looking like they didn't even feel like playing in the biggest game of the year. Right. No, they didn't like, want Peyton the, Manning. It seemed well, like they didn't want Peyton Manning to go through a second ass whooping. Right. Because that's <laughs> at Seattle's Super Bowl. Right, exactly. That was crazy. Well, shit, that'd be a third ass whooping. You forget he <laughs> lost the Saints too. Yeah, but I mean the, that I Saints that that, that Saints Super Bowl that that was a little bit of trickery going on in there with that onside <laughs> kick and don't get me wrong, the the interception was beautiful. <laughs> but I mean, if that onside kick wasn't recovered, boy, like it, it's not even about Cam not picking that ball up. It's more so just I don't know. Like like he talks about the narrative. I mean, the Ray Lewis one was another one that stuck out to me. Um, I didn't even think they were gonna beat the Colts to be honest that year. What about the Patriots narrative after nine eleven? Definitely. I don't know how we beat the Rams. I'm still mad at the Tuck rule. I don't know how we beat the Rams indoors. I, 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 I'm saying, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't take nothing away from the rings that the Patriots won, but I'm still mad at that tough rule. The Raiders either. We weren't good enough to beat a lot of teams we beat during our playoff run. The Steelers should have beat us. Um, Yeah, I mean, since we're talking about rings, I guess we should get to the championship teams in the, the year review. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can talk about not only that, just let's talk about just whatever happened during the year. We can start, uh, so I guess. Say what? Start with the champions. I guess we can, that's how we can start. I mean, whoever want to start, whatever one that's memorable to them, they can go ahead. Because I, I think mean, DJ has the most memorable one. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> so in the NHL, <laughs> here we go. We had two new teams going at it. There was no more Pittsburgh Penguins trying to repeat for the third time because they got wiped out in the second round by my caps and then on the other side in the Western Conference it was the new expansion team the Vegas Golden Knights so two new teams in the in the championship series started out bad for my boys when it went down the first game it was a it was a shootout in Las Vegas nothing new 
And uh, after that, Caps proceeded to whip somebody's ass for four straight games. A gentleman's sweep, by the way. And um, I know game two featured the save of the century. Yes, I'm exaggerating, but I'm just saying. When you have an empty netter and you don't score because the goaltender was able to make a save with his uh, stick handle, yeah, you knew at that point in that series, I knew everything was going to go to Cap's way. And One of the it, guys made the goal of the century early on in that playoff run uh, when he was kind of falling down, and then he, um, what was the dude's name? I think he's. Oh, uh, you talking about uh, Devonte Smith Pelly? Yeah. Yeah, that was in that that was in the game clinching uh series uh game. He, that that was an amazing goal. Oh my god. Yeah. Cause it was funny because uh what was the what's the name couldn't clear it out. Uh, the Knights didn't clear it out their zone and I think it was uh Brooks Orr pick that was able to get it right in there and he, he just picked it off and I think uh Fleury thought it was gonna go one way, he got fooled and it was just an open netter. But it, he fell and yeah, it, it was Definitely a goal. And then um, I think the game winner in game five, I keep on I, I I don't understand why I'm drawing a blank on this dude's name, but he wound up scoring the um, game winning goal off a garbage goal. Um, mm. I say garbage because he it literally was shot and Flurry lost sight of it and it trickled behind him and dude picked it up and it, he, just, he just shoved it right in the net. And mm. then after that, we just played defense and that was it. We won in Vegas. And I thought what was the most exciting championship series in all the sports. So I know people are going to disagree with me because it's the NHL. Some people prefer boring ass Cavs Warriors championship series again, but yeah, you know we'll that's, we'll that's that me. a little bit. But, but yeah, I I definitely liked and celebrated the whole year, and will continue to celebrate until the Cavs get eliminated or repeat which they have a chance to they, they look pretty good so that's my uh championship story well i guess i might as well get to the uh red sauce i don't think there were any other uh, personal championships were there between no, four man, majors that, i think. mean there's no personal one for me i mean didn't for... didn't mls have a feature uh landon championship team in the mls there, there's no personal ones for me, so. Hey. Oh, oh, but you were on Twitter <laughs> talking about it, though. Yo, let no me let me let me, let me let me tell you. <laughs> let, let, let me let me tell you. Let me let me honestly tell you about that. All of a sudden, it doesn't count any. It, I, no, it, I'm not all saying it doesn't count. I'm not saying it don't count. It. I don't understand it because I I had no idea. I don't know nothing about soccer. I watched the last 20 minutes of it because but you tweeted I tweeted about it. Yeah, and what did I tweet? I tweeted I had no idea about <laughs> what was that, going isn't on. Isn't that just like when you was getting involved in a tennis conversation? Oh. You watch a damn one, match. And, and once again, I didn't. Especially not, that Serena. Okay, 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 okay. Let's slow down that. once again. That you want to? 2018. You, you want to keep talking about this? Okay, go ahead. Because I'm going to say it once again. I knew nothing about what was going on, and it was repeatedly times. I even put it on repeatedly Google. Repeatedly times? Yeah, repeatedly times. That I put it on Twitter that I even Googled how long is the MLS match. Because I had no idea what was going on. All I know was it went across my timeline that the champion, some championship game was going on, and Atlanta United was up. So I was like, well, let me look at this to see what's going on. And I'm looking like, why the fuck the time is going up, not down? That that's how ignorant I was to the to the damn game. So I had to I had to but Google claim all this the stuff. championship on Twitter though. No, oh I didn't, I didn't claim it. I didn't claim it, bro. I did not claim a damn thing. All I did was like you tweeted yeah. about it. That means you claimed it. You're mad petty, DJ. Just, just shut up. <laughs> shut up. You don't you don't you don't even make sense. I don't, know, make sense. I don't make sense. You tweet about stuff you have no idea what it is. And you know what? It makes sense because I'm telling you that I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> God, Jesus Christ. And then yeah, lays the trap. <laughs> you know, once again, I did not know nothing. I Googled it and I was like, what the hell is going on? Because like I said, when I first cut it on, the time was going up instead of down. Like any other sport I know, the time goes to zero and the game's over. This damn game is like 75 and it's going up to 76. I'm like, why is the time going up? So that's when I had to Google. I had to find out how the time is played, how long is the game, how does the game end up finishing. I didn't know nothing. 
Oh, just no, wait it. until it, just wait until you actually start watching soccer if it ever happens and you get into like extra time. You're gonna be really fucking mind. I don't. I, I'm. Be, I don't think I'll, I. I don't have any interest in it. My main thing. I was. I was just happy for Arthur Blank for him actually winning something, because I mean after what happened with the Super Bowl and all the stuff, it was good to see him actually happy to win something. Outside of that, I can give two shits about Atlanta United. I don't. I don't watch soccer like that. If if I'm gonna watch soccer, I'm gonna play Nintendo World Cup. That that's it. I, I don't I don't know or I don't even I'm not interested in it. It was cool to see them win, but I'm not gonna see it and be like rah rah. I'm happy that they, I was like it's good that they won or he won something because he was what three and a half quarters away of winning the Super Bowl and he didn't win that. So I mean, as far as like championships on my end, and, it, mm. and it, the only one that really that was I was happy about, and it's not even a real quote unquote championship. I mean, yeah. I went to Alabama and I watched Georgia Southern win on a game winning field goal. Now that shit was great. Right. I went there and watched them play that, and I mean, that was one hell of a game. If you get a chance to watch this on YouTube, that was like one of the better bowl games that was out at the time. I know there's a few of them that was played today, but that was a really good game to go to. I really enjoyed that. Now that's probably that's my highlight as far mm-hmm. as the sports championship this year. But as far as that Atlanta United shit, no, I'm, not, I'm never gonna watch their ass again. It's soccer. I, that's not my. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, this is, shit, I don't know nothing about that shit, man. I just, I just wanted about to, them ever in your life. Hey, I just wanted to know. You're mad petty. Yeah, she, I'm just saying. She, I just my main, my main thing is I just wanted to see if they was going to win. And I was right. confused because when I cut the game on, I never seen a sport where the time goes up. So I, I was I didn't know who was winning, who was losing, or if the time goes up, is, is the game over, or do they start over? I didn't know nothing. So, yeah, I'm serious. I didn't know. So, I, I just watched the last 20 minutes of it. And after that, I went back to play, you know, some video games or something. It, it was cool. But, nah, man. But Georgia Southern, you know, hey, man, they got a pretty good recruiting class, too, man. Y'all better watch out for that team. That team well, I'll give some sauce real quick. Um, This is probably the first year that we were favorites to come out of the AL and we actually came out of the AL. Um, oh, by the way, that was a great World Series, too. Had one of the longest games ever in the history of civilization. Wasn't it the game clincher that was that long? Nah, no, it was the game before because the Dodgers before. ended up winning, and I was pissed. Like, y'all stayed up mad long to see y'all bum-ass niggas lose. Oh, damn. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like, I actually, dude. I actually watched every game in that World Series. It was like, I actually enjoyed watching that. So, I mean, we, we, had, we had an amazing team this year. Uh, usually the Red Sox aren't a team that are, you know, is overloaded with talent, but this year just all came together. J.D. Martinez was a big free agent signing. Um, Chris Sale balled out. He's done tearing up jerseys like a little baby, uh, like he was doing in Chicago. So, you know, uh, big ups for that. David Price actually played well in the playoffs for once. Um, you know, uh, we had Steven Pierce, who was an unlikely hero in that series. So that was nice. I, I never was worried about the Dodgers. It's crazy. Like, like I said, I'm not used to having this uh, thought process when I think about the Red Sox. Usually with our underdogs going to the playoffs a lot of times, even if even if we're the number one seed, it always seems like there's one team that had injuries and eventually we're going to run into them and they're just going to – you know, destroy us like it kind of seemed like with the Astros, but that turned out to not happen. Um, but yeah, it was a great series, like VF said. Um, how long did that game go? 17 innings, I think so. Which one, the last game? Let me talk about that. The long... Uh, no, the it... long game went 18 innings, 18 innings, yeah, it went 18 innings, man, <sighs> seemed like an eternity. Because because there was a point where neither team was scoring for the longest time, which is what really made it seem like it was just it was just dragging along. The Red Sox had no pitchers left or hitters. The the Dodgers I think were left with maybe one pitcher, one hitter, um, on the bench. It just was a crazy game. But like I said, I was never really worried about the Dodgers. Um, the Astros were the only team that I really felt like could beat us of all the teams. So. It was a sweet win, but not one of the sweeter ones because obviously there was the first one that broke the curse, so to speak, and then even the one after that was a bit more hard fought. But 
this one was, you know, it, it was it was nice. Well, I mean, I, I enjoyed watching the World Series. It was it was a good one to watch. I mean, I I I, I usually watch baseball around this time that time of the year anyway, because the regular season was too drawn out. But it was a it's a pretty good. Hold on, B five. No, the LA Dodgers isn't your team, is it, B five? No, no, not at all. Actually, I don't really care for baseball. But if I had to, I'd probably just go to go with the Mets. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, y'all, y'all, um, they're actually uh, primed to have a pretty big free agency, it seems like. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking what the Braves are doing. I, I mean, they got a really good rookie down there. I, I like what they're doing so far, too. Who else did y'all sign? Y'all signed somebody, right? Yeah, we signed a few others. I can't remember, though. Signed back uh, Brian McCann. Yeah, I'll... yeah, Brian McCann. Yeah, we did get him. I do remember that. Somebody else. Yeah, it was somebody else I can't remember. But we're, uh, trying, we're, we're trying to keep a young nucleus together, and I, like I said, I like the, I like where they're going. I think they signed a pitcher or something too. I just like Freddie Freeman. He's my he's my guy. Freddie Freeman. Yeah, Freeman's good too. But um, um, you know you know what would be interesting to see where Bryce winds up. Bryce Harper. I see. I keep hearing the Reds. And I hear the Reds and I hear the Dodgers too. The Reds are putting together a really good. Off season right now. Yeah. Yeah, because I know the Dodgers made a couple of trades just to make it look like they're freeing up room. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. I don't think there's gonna gonna be anybody left there because Puig got traded to the Reds too, which is what made me think that uh, Bryce might just ultimately end up there because they're putting a pretty good squad together. But you know that would be messed up if he winds up going back to the Nationals. After all that has gone on, yeah, like, you know just, what? Yeah. Never mind. I'll stay. What What about you, Bills? Your Your championship memory of 2018? Um, it's hard not to remember the Red Sox one, but oh, you already said that. Why am I said? Yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say we just move on. <laughs> I was going to it's say gonna... that too, but I let the train run off the tracks on that one. Hey, the train is always off the tracks on this one. What so the hell are you talking about? Something. If it's on the tracks, it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess we could do our little two cents on the NBA Finals. Not really much to talk about. I don't know. Um... It was a, you know. <laughs> well, the sale on brooms went up. I know that much. Hey, listen. It, it could have been a much better rooms and pillows. It, it could have hey. been a much better finals if, if Jr. didn't do what he did. Yeah, that's 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 really the topic about that. that. Yeah, that was it. Once, once that oh. happened, once that happened, basically the finals was over. I, I knew they were gonna get swept after that point. But LeBron, and you knew LeBron up, was leaving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you he always leaves when it, everything gets bad. It's like yo, you you did everything you could to beat these guys. Game one at Oracle Arena, you put up fifty one, all for that to happen. It's like you could tell when they went into overtime. It's like they was like, "Fuck it, I'm done." And you can't blame nobody for that, but for Jr. I mean, he he blew that. I mean, and the Cavaliers never. Oh, what were you gonna say, Fife? I'll just say I loved his LeBron's hands, and he looked. He's like, what? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was that was beautiful when he did well, that. Well, you know, another uh, interaction between two players is being compared to it now between uh, cousins and uh, and Thielen. <laughs> and Thielen, yeah. <laughs> oh, I would definitely get get on that in a second. But about this series, like the thing that got me was first off LeBron dropping fifty one on the Warriors, I didn't see that coming. Um it's very rare that anybody has an offensive night like that against them. I mean obviously the team isn't the same this year. They lost a couple pieces, but for him to score fifty one, it wasn't even like a working hard fifty one. Like he just came out and scored fifty one. Like this is just something that he does. That's how he made it seem. Mm-hmm. And then he kept the team in the game the whole game. I mean, th- everybody on that team played well that game. Yeah. And Jr. I don't know how that happens. And then yeah, did y'all see the reaction video on the sideline during the timeout? Yes. Uh, yeah, oh, I yeah. watched all of it. I watched all Worst of it. Worst yeah. yeah, that's when you knew. I was like, yeah, he was. It was. It was done at that point. I knew it was over at that point. I, I hate it. I hate it for him, but. 
I knew it was done at that Bro, point. Bro, I was like, I carried y'all sorry ass niggas all the way to <laughs> <laughs> the last minute of it in, in, in Oracle? And y'all do this? Jeez. Hey. Hey, if you notice, like, there was one time where he just, he was on, <laughs> I think when he found out that, that, uh, that, uh, was it, Tyrone Lou didn't do something, I forgot what it was, and he, just, he had an extra time out. Yeah. Um, just, told him not to call time or something like that. Yeah. And, yeah, he told him not to, yeah. <laughs> and LeBron just sat there, and once he found out, uh, he just crossed his hands like, 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 like a little kid. <laughs> And just looked away and just was like biting his teeth and just you could tell he was just like that, that little kid, you know what I'm saying? That just that was explode. And that was the moment that he knows like I'm never playing with these guys yep. after the series. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that, yeah. that was the point when you know he he was done. And you know what? I think now obviously I'm a LeBron fan, but I'm one of the more unbiased LeBron fans you'll ever find. Here's my thing. In that situation, I've reacted like that a bunch of times. And I knew it was childish as hell. But, damn, like, in that situation, I was asking myself, like, pretty much the next couple of days, I'm like, would I have reacted like that? No, and I don't I don't blame LeBron for acting like that at all. I, I no. think it would be better, mm-hmm. but I can't Not say me. that I would have done it. In that moment, knowing that the team that you're facing, in the moment that y'all were in, how close it was, I, I I have no problem with him acting like that. That yeah. I, I'm saying it's, it it was just too much on the line. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean, I, I, if you were, if uh, if they had home field advantage, and they were playing their first two games in Cleveland, I was like, all right, you can go back and you can get them in game two because you're playing at home. But that's the one. That's the one game you want to get that first game in Oracle. That's the one you want to get. Because mm-hmm. after that, I mean, you see what happened. It's very tough to win game two after what happened. You done gave it your all the first game. Yeah, I could see him acting like that. I had no problem. Like I can't, I can't, I can't really even criticize him because I know I would have reacted that way. I've right. done it a bunch of times, and I I might be a bad leader for that, but in that moment, it just felt like like we worked so hard to get to this point. No, man, I, so I, I, petty I, as that. I probably wouldn't be surprised if instead of him acting the way that he would just walk up and slap the shit out of Jr. No, I'm <laughs> Yeah, I'm I, thought serious. Was, I, I thought that was gonna happen. I agree. Yeah, I'm dead serious. I would not look. You you're facing a team that beat you last year four one. You're going up you, against. You're going up against this team again, and you got them dead the rights game one at home on to them. actually possibly snatch the soul out their hearts for the rest of the series. And he does something like that. That's yeah. after hard fought game seven against Boston, who they also weren't supposed to beat. So exactly. Tested. Exactly. So if he would have turned around and just just started swinging on Jr., I, I, I probably wouldn't have been mad. I wouldn't have been mad. <laughs> nope. What, what you think? Because they, they said what they said. He said he went in the locker room after the game and punched the wall. No, I would have punched the shit out of Jr. Yeah. I, that... Now, now oh, hold on. Now here's the one thing. Now here's the one thing that I got to get on LeBron about. I'm sorry, bro. Don't show up in Game Four after the press conference. I mean, after the game with a fucking cast on. Yeah, I agree with that. Because unless, seems- uh, uh, unless if he unless he had that cast on, he said he punched shit out of Jr. Yeah, he could he could have two casts on then. I don't care. <laughs> no, but it seemed like it seemed like a cop out. It seemed like it, it kind of seemed like he kind of de- tried to deflect blame. I I I, I, I do. Agree that's with not that. the reason your team lost. Your team lost because they weren't the better team. You got swept. It happens. At the end of the day, you can't tell me that somebody told him. Your hand's gonna fall off if you don't show up to this post game press conference with this fucking cast on. Mm. Yeah, it, it was just a bad. It was a bad look. Maybe he, it was he was hurting the whole time, but it, it was a bad look. Though. Yeah, it, it, he could have had the cast on like after the press conference, but don't come up there with it. It, it makes it seem like, well, my hand was hurt the whole time. Like, nah, man, we know how great you are. You know how good you play the game. Don't you? You don't have to do that. Manny Pacquiao, he went and got uh, got torched by Floyd Mayweather. Oh, I threw my shoulder out in training. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Like, come on, come on. Like, oh, what are you going to talk about Floyd Mayweather? Uh, no, no, I don't no, want no. I, I to talk about that. Cause, no, I wasn't yeah, talking that's about not that. even worth it. That was... my, my, I, I, my, my only take from it is, like me and NYK was saying a while back, I think he, he has somewhat money problems, and this kind of shows it. He made all his money boxing, and he goes overseas to beat some 
some kid up for nine million. Something's up with his money. I ain't trying to count nobody money, but something ain't right. Cause if you set, you set. That that that's all I'm gonna. But he beat shit out that dude. And unless he's just bored, huh? Unless he's just bored, which I don't think he would be with, you know, a promotion. Yeah, I don't, he could be. Cause if you love what you do and you're not doing it, you could be bored. But I mean, it. I lean more towards him. Money he problems some... too. Yeah, because he been talking yeah. about he want to play Kobe Bryant in basketball for a million dollars. He was doing all kind of crazy promotions. It's like, yeah, something ain't right. Something ain't right there. That, you know, B five. You say you want to say something about it? No, I wanted to say something about the press conference that LeBron had after that series. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, did you? No, I thought this was a bad. Speaking of bad looks for LeBron, after the. You know, after they kept asking him the questions that he didn't want to answer, and he just kind of <laughs> grabbed his purse and then he bounced up out of there. Yeah, yeah. Did you, did you see his purse, though, man? Yeah, pretty, that's why I said that. That sass was, was wild, wild, bro. That, thank you. That's what I was really coming at. He and he had that like, and it looked like, like if you could see the bottom of his pants, you you probably was wearing them. them, them uh, <laughs> Some high waters from that. Right, you mean he, he, had, he, had a, he had a he had a, he had a, them Cam Newton specials. <laughs> I looked at that. I said, "Am I looking at this man looking like this with this sass?" Like, yes, that's perfect word. Yeah, uh, he had, he had, on, he had on he had on that 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 Cam Newton special, man. <laughs> and and the way he was holding that purse was like. <laughs> James? Or am I looking at like RuPaul or something? You know Yo, what I'm saying? Man, I ain't talk, no, not, I not, no, but you right, though, because these dudes be making too much money to be dressing so fucked up. I agree. That's some bullshit, man. I, I can't get with that. I can't rock with that. These community are going to mass report the hell out of this video. I know, right? <laughs> no, I'm serious, man. I mean, you got Cam Newton I, around I here. I should said Dwight Howard did. I'm sorry. I oh, God. Let's not even get into him. Oh, man. He got... I'm sorry, DJ. I'm sorry, DJ. <laughs> oh, man. I don't care at this point. <laughs> D- yo, DJ don't care about anything Washington right now. John Wall's about to get traded. The whites out here talking, calling Kelly Oubre sweet. And dude's dicks Whoa. on the bench, acting like people forgot. And, his, that and, 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 and that injury he got. Yeah, um, I, I, I was making jokes about that one. It was, it was like basically his ass hurts. I wonder <laughs> why. Hmm. That's tr- <laughs> that walking in that video. <laughs> we can't assume why his ass hurts. I was like, oh, man, he pulling, he pulling his glute muscles. Like, well, you know what? Boy, he pulling something. I made a joke. I made a no, joke. You can't be doing it in Atlanta, huh? That, hey, <laughs> listen, I, hey, man, it, it's yeah. bad out there, man. It, trust me, man. I lived there a long time. It's Boy, bad man. out there. I'll say that much. Do we have any championships left? I can't. Uh, Eagles. Uh, no, nah, okay. I don't have much to say about that. I mean, they were the underdogs. They... Honestly, that's why I really don't have much to say. You know, I... they did they did what they're supposed oh, to do. Okay. You know, congratulate them. You know, I... it's nothing to me. I don't think it's any anybody outside of Philly probably don't look at it as special. You know what that game was? That game was a low budget version, a very low budget version of the Chiefs Rams game we got this year. Oh, that was a good game too. Because that game was actually entertaining, and there were a lot of defensive stops, but that Philadelphia Patriots game... It was like no defense until yeah. that very last Right, part. right. Until we, that last like, play, yep. But no points were going up for a short period of time. And, where you it know just, what it reminds like, me of? It reminds me of these the, the attorney guys playing Madden, and somebody finally oh get God. that one turnover that wins the game. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the tournament, Madden, nobody gets a turnover until... <laughs> That's true. That's very it's like, true. It's like, it's like one of those games, like you know. Yeah, it was. It wasn't very entertaining, honestly. No. Like I said, anybody outside of Philly, or if you're a Philly fan, you're the ones that probably thought that was special. I knew we were just like, okay. It's, it's, it's Some of y'all thought it was special enough to eat shit in the parade, but mm. you know. You know, that's 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 the kind of special line. I'm like, you know, Washington, we as far as the Capitals, we won a uh, championship for our first time. We weren't eating shit. We were just celebrating, I, taking I pictures, and on, taking videos. Yeah. I think I'll wear a pair and of drinking. Cam, I'll wear a pair of those Cam Newton specials before I do that. Oh god. <laughs> Damn. 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 Cam Newton uh-huh. be showing up. Dressed like he should have been. That dude, that dude be having on pink socks with grandmother slippers, 
with <laughs> church pants that look like church shorts with a with a with a Curious George hat and a flannel. Curious and a flannel George hat. Yeah, maybe. Some... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, type, you know, yo, type in some fake inspirational shit that like an IG model would put in their captions. Yeah. <laughs> like, bro, you don't get out of here with that. That's why Kelvin Benjamin didn't take him serious when he rolled up on him. He's like, I know, man, right? I know, right? Got something to say about me, man? Kelvin said, "Man, get your small ass pants wearing ass away from me." 